And here you have it, the brand new Clarion NX604. It appears that on the, again this year, like I was last year for the NX603, the first to review this unit. I guess everybody else is too busy sleeping while I'm out working hard to entertain and inform the general populace. So that's okay with me. It's okay with me. Uh, stick with me. I'm going to educate you on everything there is to know about NX604. This unit here is really, really cool, man. Um, I'm going to tell you right off the bat that there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to see and I'm going to go through with you that is just night and day difference than it was with NX603. Now, as with some other manufacturers, what they do is they like to rebox and repackage, maybe throw in a couple little extra features um, and call it something new. That is definitely, again, not what Clarion is doing. Clarion just keeps making these huge steps and advancements in technology, features, changes with their units. It really seems that Clarion is paying attention to people, what they want. Um, I, I almost feel like they actually might have heard me complain about what I was saying about the NX603's audio controls last year and actually sat down and said, hey, let's fix it for that guy so he doesn't pick on us anymore. Uh, they have corrected that. They have invested and they are their only company out there. Uh, and I know that Clarion is very proud of it that they have this intelligent voice which is a Google thing where they tie together. So this unit now, you just talk to it. You hit a button, there's this proprietary function which you just hit, you say, um, tired, find me a hotel, find some pizza, place to sleep, campsite. You just say all these different types of point of interest comments. Um, you throw out the remarks. And just as it would work with your Android tablet at home, it works exactly the same with this Clarion NX604. So that is something I know that Clarion is very proud of. No one else, and I mean no one else can say that. They are the only company that had, that had invested into that technology and owns it. It is proprietary to Clarion. Um, along with their 11 million point of interest, their GPS, which has always worked exceptionally well. I've used it many times myself, and I was very pleased with it. But not, not just that. Clarion also did some major overhauls as far as their functionality, their Bluetooth, app compatibility. Um, this unit's got mind-blowing stuff going on in the back. Um, it's now compatible with an iPhone 5, which some of the other manufacturers this year are still lagging on. Uh, given that you do need to get a proprietary uh, lightning cable, which I myself, which I don't have because I apparently can't afford an iPhone 5. Um, but my 4S plugs right directly in through USB or via Bluetooth and works perfectly. And I've already done it. If I already download the apps, I'm going to show you how it works. It's really cool. Um, all the stuff is free, unlike Pioneer and a lot of the other manufacturers out there. They all charge you nickel and dime you, which I hate. And you know I hate that kind of stuff. Um, they give it to you for free. If you want it, use it. If you don't, who cares? Don't get it. You know, that's how they feel, and I think that that's wonderful. Um, what else? On the back, there's an HDMI input, so you got that feature all as well, and you have all these apps, which Clarion is ahead of the game with other manufacturers as far as the popular ones that tie into it, like Facebook, Twitter, Traffic, which is a first for Clarion. Well, I'm not going to say that, but it's really different in its own way. This has built-in traffic, kind of like how JVC's, um, uh, gee, what the hell is it, a KW50, uh, uh, I should remember, but whatever. The flagship uh, JVC's have the, um, the built-in traffic traffic uh, for, for lifetime that's built right into this unit, which is a new thing, and I think that that's awesome. Uh, you don't have to pay for it. I just like that stuff. Uh, this unit works with Pandora, iHeart, TuneIn Radio, which is apparently something new that I'm not aware of, but I'll, I'll get with it. Uh, for your personal stuff, it works with your email, your calendar, your news, your weather, all that stuff, whatever you want, you put on the phone, it works with your radio. It's so cool, man. It's just so cool. So they've taken a smart access and they take it to the next level. So uh, enough of me uh, talking. I'm going to show you the unit, what you get, what's in the back, the harness, the connections, the size. I'm going to spec it all out for you. Then I'm going to start geeking out with all the buttons and showing you what's going on inside this, this bad boy. So let's get to all now that. Now we're on the rear side of this unit and I want to show you what's going on back here. Um, I'll start here in this spot. This here is the 16-pin Clarion wire harness, which has been typical of Clarion for years and years. Thank you, Clarion, for never changing, making it easy for people that are, you know, true to Clarion and stick with their products and upgrade year after year. This makes that so much quicker and easier. Um, similar kind of thing going on here with your RCA preamp outputs, which are 4-volt in voltage preamp outputs, as far as for your audio side, that is, by the way. You have a pair for your subwoofer output, you have your front channel output, you have your rear, you have your audio in, and your video out, and you have another, another one there for your camera. So that's all there. Over here we have our GPS antenna, which is non-magnetic by the way. 
Um, we have a fake out fan because there's none in there. The screen plug is an anonymous plug. I don't know what the heck that is, and I can't find any information on it. I'm thinking that it's some kind of proprietary plug they're going to introduce and release something in the future, but for now, no comment. Over here, you have a steering wheel interface plug for a jack, for like a 3.5 mil for uh, steering wheel controls. Your analog input. This unit does have HD radio tuner. I, I neglect to uh, say that. It is built into it. You don't have to buy a THD 401 or anything like that to expand on it. It's built in. It's lifetime. It's included. It's free. That there is for your analog terrestrial uh, t tuner input. Over here, you have a jack for your S S uh, Sirius XM V200 if you want to add Sirius XM radio. Plug it right in there. One plug digital with an antenna. It's done deal. And down here, we got a USB jack, which they were kind enough to include. A nice three foot long USB jack with a waterproof termination end on it, which is really cool. I like it. Nice quality little plug. And over there you have another one for your HDMI. I mean, what else could you, what else can you ask for? I mean, it's all there. Everything you want and need, it's there. I'm going to go ahead and cut on the power supply for this unit now so you can see what you could expect. There's that intelligent voice by Google product I was telling you about, which is pretty amazing. Okay, I'm just going to plug in my iPod super fast. Before I get started, I just wanted to show you a couple of these uh, Smart Access apps that I had already installed. So the first one I did is I put on the uh, Smart Access app. And over there I got the uh, the one for the weather. They call it the suite for car. But if I just hit the icon, it will just tell you connected to the uh, unit on the screen. So I'm not going to get into that yet. But I just wanted to show you that there was a couple apps. Um, they are, again, they're free. Uh, you just basically go onto the, uh, the iTunes store. You type in Clarion Smart Access, they come right up, there's like five or six of them. You download one, two, or all of them. It doesn't matter, they're all free and they're all pretty cool. I recommend just get them all and just get rid of the ones you don't like, just like anything else. So, the unit is on as you can see, I'm gonna, it's gonna go through its little color mode. It has a 728,000 color pattern like pretty much every radio out there in the world right now, so that's nothing crazy. Um, you have a 6.2 inch screen, which I uh, think is noteworthy, and it has a gloss black finish, one trim ring as I showed you before but in case you missed it it'll go on and give you about this much coverage not a whole lot and it appears to be reversible so I guess I don't know exactly what the logic was to all of this to be honest with you uh, but whatever it is it is so you can see I'm listening to an audiobook right now my old my old friend mr. Bar Brian Tracy and it works wonderful you have your on screen, it's a beautifully laid out screen as always, just like the NX603. So in that respect, there's nothing um, too neat or no worth, noteworthy to go over. Um, it's pretty typical of all these units for iPod control. You know, you're going to have your songs, your music, artists, genres, song, playlists. You know, it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, pretty much what you would expect. These here are all my playlists, as you can see up on the top. Tracks. Alphabetical. And here's your podcast, audiobooks, composers, genres. Um, fast forward, pause, track, change back and forth, audio and video tabs laid out right there. There's always an escape button screen so you can always go back to your smart access menu or your home menu from anywhere you are in this unit is pretty typical I see all the manufacturers are actually doing that now so that's nothing new or crazy uh, or atypical of this brand so I'll get that said um, the front of this unit very straightforward you have basically all the screen because this is flick operation which if you don't know what flick operation means it means like you know doing a lot of this kind of swipey kind of action that's what that's all about and that's the way that Clarion designed it to be used by by the actual end user and that makes sense okay uh, menu is located right here on the top you have a main menu button to switch between your maps and your audio video sources um, a multi toggle button which you could use for your volume and hit it in in the center to either get rid of the uh, image if it's too bright or you can use this as a control button for the intelligent intelligent Google voice so when you're on navigation mode you would 
tap it once for one function and press and hold it for a second function. Smart access is a button right here below it and still underneath that you have a 3.5 millimeter analog audio input button. You have a reset button which Clarion has always had in the front and down here you have a small, ever so small tab there for a micro SD. So everything you're going to need is laid out right there. The only other thing that there is to talk about is the eject button. You know, it's an eject button because your slot load is located up in there. The face is a fixed face, it's non-detachable, in, in case you were wondering. Um, now, I'm using an iPhone 4S. I'm a poor soul that, that can't get the, the 800 hour 64 gig uh, 5 model as of yet. I'm working on it. But if I did, um, they're going to recommend that you get the Apple Lightning Digital AV Adapter, whatever that is. I, I do not actually have one. I'm sorry. I'm going to invest in one, uh, and I'm going to definitely use that in the future because I'm seeing that over and over again. It's getting a little repetitious, and I'm starting to feel a little funny not having one. So I will get one. Um, so if you have a Model 5, that you should be used to that because anybody who owns an iPhone 5 should be used to buying an extra adapter because the, the cable is different. So... Uh, I guess no, no shock for those people who own that phone, but for the, but those of us who don't, it is. So, If you are an Android user, you have to use the optional HDMI cable uh, jack on the rear of this unit to make use of the smart app functionality on this unit. So if you are an Android user, be sure you're going to be wanting to have that. And the good news um, is that it's a straight plug-in right in the back. I'm sure that that's the cable that comes with your phone anyway, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I've already covered the back, the rear, most of the functionality, the extra features that are so cool and unique to this unit besides the Google Voice, the HD radio, and the traffic which is built into the unit, I mean, which is enough to say um, is, is awesome. Um, I'm going to show you how the Intelligent Voice works a little bit in the GPS mode. Um, like I said, it is a 6.2 inch screen. You have the traffic reports and they, they uh, require no additional subscription fees. If you need updates, the unit will take care of that all with within itself through the apps and the cloud and you know the whole bit it, it works so don't worry about any of that stuff that's all there for your enjoyment and Clarion does the rest Pandora internet radio if you have the app on your phone works perfectly not a need to get stressed out over that it works flawlessly um, just as you would expect as it would on any other stereo your home stereo um, it, it's all the same I'm not gonna get in there showing you how to play with uh, Pandora because you don't want to watch me for 20 minutes I can become annoying I guess like anything can after a while. Um, there's some, going to be some different audio controls. And I'm definitely going to want to spend some time on that because that is probably, uh, besides the uh, Google Voice and the free apps and free uh, upgraded stuff that this unit comes with, it's a big, 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 big deal for me because, you know, if you're going to invest in a unit like this, and these units are costing more money, folks. If you go out in the market and look at whatever... whatever manufacturer you are interested in shopping, whether it be a Clarion, a Pioneer, um, a JVC, whatever whatever it is that you're looking for, okay? Say if you're looking at something like this. This is not their flagship because it's not the 7 inch. It's a step down with the 6.2 inch screen, okay? I guarantee you when they make the same unit in the 7 inch screen, I'm guaranteeing you that the price is going to be up there, be around a 900 plus range. Reason why these apps to have, to create, cost money. Uh, they have to support themselves, the software team, the engineers, all the stuff, the updates, all the stuff that goes into that. Um, the mapping that goes into these things working, the mirror link, the proprietary cables, the copyright uh, that they have to work with, all these companies, the clouds, all this stuff, um, not to mention the traffic surface. That in itself used to always cost money for, for eons. used to cost, you know, $100, give or take, with any manufacturer, and that was annually. You're buying this once, and you're getting it forever. After 10 years, it's almost like breaking free on their flagship unit, even less for a unit such as this. So on, all these things have money, the HD radio tuner was an uh, add-on last year. If you want it with the NX603, the X NX604, which we're looking at here, has it built into it for free. So again, you take that, that's worth about $120. The other thing's worth $100. All these apps, all these smart access, all this other crap. The Google uh, feature, I mean, that's worth, you know, whatever it is, round it off. I mean, it all adds up. So they're still giving you a lot of value for your money. But if you're noticing a trend that units like this are costing more money, maybe more than you're interested in spending, there's a reason why, and I can assure you, just like your smartphone, you say, like I say, you'd have to be out of your mind to go crazy to spend $799 on a freaking iPhone. What if you drop it? What if you lose it? You know, and that's not including insurance. You know, it gets crazy. But then again, do you want a piece of crap? 
do you want to have something less than what it could be when you're stuck with a two-year plan anyway? Probably not. So do yourself a favor. Don't be cheap. Look into these units um, and really decide for yourself because I'm not biased. I don't care if you buy this unit, not buy the unit. I, I can care less one way or the other because Clarion sure is not give any money or any any uh, special support for, for uh, anything. Although they said they would two years ago when I created a review for their NX602. They're going to give me free t-shirts and crap. You never gave me those t-shirts. I'm still, I'm still sure it was. Um, but, uh, you know, for right now, do what's best for you. Do what's going to give you the best bang for your buck. And if you're a technology nut, this is really going to excel and maybe even go beyond your expectations as far as technology is concerned. So keep that in mind. That's just, you know, what I have to say about this unit. And it could be good. It could be bad. You know, I just tell you what I think. I call it like I see it. And that's the way I see it. So moving on with other features on this unit. It is a 6.2. It's 4 inches high. 7 and a quarter wide. You know, it's typical stuff. Um, doubled in. The maps cover U.S., Canada, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, and 11 million points of interest. The intelligent voice built right into it. Free lifetime traffic updates. Text-to-speech announces the actual street names at the turns. It gives you lane guidance and junction view automatically. 3D represent representations of landmarks and buildings, which is pretty common of the higher-end uh, GPS systems that are out there and have emerged for the last year or so now. Um, smart access control. Like I was saying, for social media, which is, of course, Facebook, tr Facebook Twitter, uh, your traffic, which I think is cool, internet radio, personal email, contents, your news feeds, which is another app I actually put in my phone recently. Of course, this unit will play a CD, a DVD, micro SD, and a USB memory device right out of the box. Nothing else required. The EQ is new and exciting, but it's only a six band. It's not bad. It's not the greatest. I mean, it's not like Jensen Ching, cheap, cheap kind of stuff, but it's not... It's like some of the stuff that I've seen, unfortunately, you know, I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I've seen ones that are 9, 10, 11, 12 band. That stuff makes me a little, you know, I, I drool for stuff like that. But hey, it's a great start. It's, it's a graphic EQ, um, so it's a lot more, you know, easy uh, or friendly for a user to actually interface with and use. So I think that that's going to be a big, um, a big improvement for people. People are going to like that what they see with the uh, improvement on that. Intelligent Tune Audio Enhancements, which I'm going to show you. Um, of course, it is a dual zone AV output unit, so you can have GPS, Bluetooth, phone calling going on simultaneously while having a third zone feeding into the rear, say, is, say a DVD for your children in the rear headrest, and you can do your thing times two up front simultaneously, no problem. All right, so let me show you what's going on in the main menu screen. There we are. Um, now, these icons here are all customizable like they always have been since the NX501. It's just it's always been that way. You can customize these, get rid of them, add them, change them, delete them, whatever you want it to do. So you have, by default, your phone, your nav, tuner, disc, Sirius, and USB iPod. Honestly, that's exactly the way I would have it. But people, everybody's different. Keep moving down. You have your SD, Bluetooth audio. Um, auxiliary, you know, it's your composite RCA uh, audio input from the rear. Pandora, which you could do through the app and just hit, you know, USB, just the same. Uh, auxiliary, it's right there. Um, your settings, which is where I always spend most of my time, unfortunately. Um, you have your tools for all your main uh, settings. I guess I'll just do them one by one. So you got the language, uh, your icons. We can change that, like I was just explaining. Shortcut menu. Um, you could have this, change it around. So you could take, you know, uh, that. You know, move that there, take the smart access, and bring that over there, however you want it to be. You know, you get the idea. Illumination color, right now it's on auto scan, which will go through all the colors. You can create three pr uh, programmable preset users for it, and uh, change it however you want it to be. Nothing really too uh, crazy or revolutionary there. Clock format, uh, anti-theft indicator, which will have just a red light, which will blink, you know, in your, in your absence when you turn the car off. Um... Your software, which is nothing really exciting. Check connectivity, which is going to tell you just the voltage, what's going on. Um, basic stuff. And that's pretty much it for that. I'm, I wasn't really too excited about being in there anyway. Bluetooth con uh, connections. I've already just done a video on uh, the newer VX series Clarion to Bluetooth uh, pairing. So if you want to show, 
show you, learn you how you can actually pair it if you're having any difficult with it. Um, watch that because I've already covered it. I don't do the same thing over and over again. I try not to be too repetitive with, with people because uh, I don't want to bore people. I just want to give you the stuff that you want to hear about. Um, like I said with the VX series, look at all these choices. You can add five different users on this one unit, which is mind-blowing. The only thing that's a little weird about this unit is that one here. You have um, choices when, it, when you want to um, pair to it because it has this new smartphone uh, integration which they've added into it. So read the book before you get involved in, in that. Make sure you hit the right button because it could be um, frustrating if you don't, don't do it correctly. Here's the audio settings. Uh, balance and fader. You know, pretty straightforward graphic, you know, interface, as you can see. Focal image control, which I'm not going to get involved in because, you know, everything takes time. Loudness, which just increases lower uh, base or lower frequency uh, volumes at lower listening levels. So that way it gives you more low end at lower volume levels. Most people abuse this feature and leave it on when they crank out the stereo and they wonder why the speakers distort. You know, the loudness feature. Graphic EQ, this is what I was wanting to show you. These are the presets. This is what it looks like now. Like a normal EQ. Actually, it saved my setting. Even after unplugging it. Well, look at that. So, keep that in mind. If you unplug this thing from your car, you disconnect your battery, you plug it back in, it actually remembers every single thing you did. That's I've, that's usually not common. It's not typical, but of this one, it, it is. So, you have a six-band EQ. So, this one will go, take you 60 hertz to 249 hertz. 250 hertz to 819 hertz to one one and a half thousand hertz to 5k to 16 and these are all you know you could do it with your finger and do this 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 the swipe deal you could do it the old school way up and down not bad i like that that's a really big selling point for me personally man if i had a customer and they wanted me to tune their system in this is so much better than trying to explain to them frequencies that's a nightmare and most people don't understand how to use it so that's going to benefit a lot of people and they're going to wind up getting a better sounding product for it as well. Volume smoother, which is another newer feature. Um, I think I'll go over more of this in another video because it takes everything takes time. Virtual bass is another one. I mean, these are all new features. I'm sorry, I keep leaving. Okay, high pass and low pass filter. They give you three choices on a high pass filter. So you can block 50 hertz, 80, or 120 hertz down for your full range speakers. Then you got your low pass filter. So on your sub, you could take over from there and go down. So you got 50, 80, 120. Unfortunately, it's not as flexible as I like it to be because uh, I personally like to create bandpass filters. Um, but, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, Gone to the days where you had a digital signal processor in your stereo. That's what other that's what amplifiers and processors are for, I guess. Your day night mode for your uh, for your visual settings. Divix, device type, you can set program your type of unit, browser cache. That's enough of that. I'm gonna go back. I wanna show you what the map looks like. Like like always, like last year, I mean, this is this is a really good mapping system, and it, what's really good about this system is that it has a lot of point of interest in there. Um, I've used this myself, actually, when I moved here to Florida two years ago. Uh, my my wife had an NX seven hundred seven hundred two, I believe, and what was really good about it is that my kids are getting hungry or they have to go to the bathroom, like literally, uh, like on the hour, like literally every hour. So I had to constantly keep finding McDonald's and Burger Kings and little like Denny's places for them to stop and go pee and stuff like that. This unit is wonderful if you just want to add a turn off to it. I mean, it gave you all the gas mileage. It gave you the economy settings. I mean, it was a joy. The, uh, the vocals were very clear. The close-ups were excellent. Um, the graphics were intense. It was very easy for my wife to use it, and she's not really, you know, tech savvy. If she could get a, get a good grip on it within you know uh, you know one 23 hour driving trip, I'll tell you anybody could you anybody. It's it was very good. I'll put it to you that way. This is really a joy to use, and not only that, but this unit has that Google um, voice, that intelligent voice. The way it works is is like this. I'm gonna give it a shot. You hit this button. Uh, hang on a second. You hit that. It's gotta load up first, I guess. I was goofing around with this yesterday. I forgot some of the stuff, so forgive me. Ah, 
Ah, okay, here we go. So you hit the button, I'm just gonna say, uh, find an Italian place. With my lousy accent, we'll see what we get. Oop, I didn't even hit the button. What did it think I was saying? Oh, I, I didn't realize it, you see that? Okay, so you hit a button, it's going to say I find an Italian. Uh, yeah, okay. Find pizza place. Pizza place. There you go. So you got Joe's, Amy's, Pizzeria, Paradiso. I mean, and this thing will literally do all this kind of crazy commands. I mean, if you say, I'm tired, uh, find me a place to sleep. Um, Where's the show? What's the weather? I mean, any anything that's pretty much multimedia uh, engaging content through the GPS navigation system. Um, it's just amazing, and it just becomes it's it's such a broad topic. I can literally sit here for about an hour or more easily, just showing you commands and going crazy with it. Clarion has, was nice enough to already create a video on that specific topic, so I can direct you to it. You just go to Clarion uh, website, pop in, you know, Google Intelligent Voice or NX604 Voice. They have a whole array showing you exactly how you can interface with this. So, uh, Google Voice is really uh, an inherent part of this feature. I don't know how they got away with it and how they made it work, but they really did. I mean, just look at how great this thing works. Denny's Restaurant. And there you go. There's all the Denny's around you. I mean, you can hit the button. It'll tell you everything about the Denny's, the location, how long to get there, um, if they have coupon specials, uh, you know, you name it. I mean, what's around there? I mean, it, it's mind-blowing. The technology is coming out in some of these new units. It's just, it's just too much. But there you have it. There's the Clarion NX604. If you have any more questions about it, shoot a comment, and I'll be happy to respond to let you know what I think about it. But there it is.